We had to come up with rap names, you know. Um, we grew up at the time of uh, Ice Tea and Ice, Ice Cube, Cube. Mm -hmm. and everybody had like that funny name. And um, you know, I loved Stone Cold Steve Austin. Ah. Don't tell me that's where it comes from. Oh, wow. I, I promise. Don't wow. tell me that's where. <laughs> I was an instrument, man, to, you know, sometimes people will use a sushi knife to cut bread. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, with, with me, Oskido kind of saw the, the potential. <laughs> you caught that late. I'm yeah. sorry, I, yeah. I'm imagining, yeah. I caught it, but I'm now imagining. Yeah, like I'm watching. Sushi knife. Yeah, I think I used up my bundles for bed like this, yeah. <laughs> like, um, hardly a month later, I got bitten by a dog in Lesotho. Hey. Wow. I oh, hold on, hold on. Wow. Did it happen? Did it happen before midnight or after midnight? <laughs> when I roll people up one, one nice one, you know, like yeah. a, a good uh, yeah. headbanger, I roll them up. And then they're like, yo, man, this is so good. I'm like, they don't call me stone for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Your mornings with Malume Tap. My former radio station, where, where I used to work, right? Let, let, me, let me plug you with a little bit of information here, right? They've got this thing called their academy, where, uh -huh. people, where people join. And at the end of the academy, you have to write your final exam, right? And one, Tamba wrote that exam. One question that has been on that exam for the last 20 years, like without fail. The question is, what was the first song to ever play on Bags. that radio station? Bags. The answer is Bongo Muffin Makeba. And joining us live in studio this morning for the next 40 minutes, we Woo! get to hang out with the one, the only, Mr. Stone Siate. Hey, good morning, Stone. Welcome to UFM. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, my man. How are you doing? We're Contact. very well. And we're we're no, glad to can, have can, you. Can I, can, I, can I correct that, that, that thing? Somebody messed you guys up with that uh, Makeba song. Mm. Um, it was... It wasn't Officially, originally. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't originally. Um, the first first track to mm. play uh, on on YFM, it was the test signal for about a month. <laughs> well, we don't count the test signal. <laughs> still, no, don't count. And <laughs> it was final battle, <laughs> battle rhyme. <laughs> anyway, welcome wow. to it. I want to start this off with something that I I, I didn't know until recently uh, when someone told me. Uh, is that you actually hail originally from the Northwest province. Tell yeah. us where. Yeah, I'm, I'm straight out of my Fiking, Muff Town. I mean, I was born in a rural hospital, which is like about a, an hour outside my Fiking. Um, I grew up on a farm uh, with my grandmother. You know, my mother was a young divorcee. So when I went to live with her, um, we, we moved to Itzusing, then to Muff Town. Mm. And I grew up in Muff Town throughout school, high school, and came to Josie when I was like 19 and a half. You know what blew my mind though, right? Something I also didn't know about you until recently. Mm. I thought that like if I see your ID book now, your name is Stone. <laughs> <laughs> I genuinely <laughs> always thought. We all thought so. Yeah. Yeah. And then when so. someone we the other day so. said, um, Tepo's coming in on Thursday, I'm like, who? Who's Ooh, Tepo? They're like Stone. I'm like, ah, ah, man. Yeah. This thing of stage names. So <laughs> how did you end up choosing the name Stone? Apparently it has something to do with hip hop. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we had to come up with rap names, you know. Um, we grew up at the time of uh, Ice T and Ice, Ice Cube, Cube. Mm -hmm. and everybody had like that funny name. And, um, you know, I loved Stone Cold Steve Austin. Ah. Don't tell me that's where it comes from. Oh, wow. I, I promise. Don't wow. tell me that's where it <laughs> we, we used wow. to watch. We used to watch wrestling like a religion on Sundays in boarding school in Mabato High, you know. So, you know, and when he came, I was like Stone Cold Mang. Oh, okay, Stone Cold T, Stone Cold Tebo. Stone Cold ah, T, so the T yeah. was for Tebo. T yeah. was for Tebo. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I get it, Stone Cold T. <laughs> <laughs> There's and no then ways. And then I got to was just like Stone, yeah, Stone, my man. <laughs> and then it's where's the phone? Oh, Stone, where's the phone? <laughs> phone. <laughs> I would have never guessed that it came from this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But it's cold, man. Look at it. Stone like, cold tea. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so we had one. to do the spelling thing and, you know, kind of mm -hmm. mess it up. and um, To change it so that yeah, it wasn't yeah, S-T-O-N-E. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
All right. Uh, you, you mentioned Osquito, right? Mm-hmm. Talk to me about um, the launch of, of, of Bongo Muffin. Because at the time, I think Boom Shaka was pretty much the only other like mm. white dog group yeah, yeah, yeah. around. Why not go solo? And what was the conversation with Osquito? Like, what, what were you guys trying to do at the time? Because it was a boy band when yeah. it first started. No, originally, man, we met Osquito in 94. At the end of 94, the festive year 94. They had been coming to Muff Town, you know, doing bashes with Christos and all the other guys. Vinny Da Vinci. And when we met Osquito, Boomshaka had just left Kalawa with Christos. And, you know, we did like a freestyle for him. He came back a week later to collect Tebe and Bruce. And Tebe and Bruce, um, the album that Tebe did as a solo album was actually supposed to be a group album with myself, Tebe, and Bruce. You know, Bruce as the beat maker, Tebe as the DJ, and myself as kind of the ch- chanter rapper guy. And Bruce, um, I caught a case. And then, uh, <laughs> <laughs> can't <to> share. <laughs> and I tell you, Bruce came through before me. Um, so when I came to Jersey, I was coming under the guise of coming to school, but I knew that we were coming to do music here because we'd already met Osquito. And you know, so throughout that year, the plan was that okay, since Stone missed out on recording this album, he's going to do a solo. But hip hop at the time was not really, mm. I mean, the only group was Prophets of the, yes. of the City, yeah, and so. After some time, you know, the concept came. We said, like, let's look at Boom Shaka. Boom Shaka has got all these elements, but what if we made a boy band like that? Mm. So a singer, a dancehall guy, and a rapper. You know, that would come. Oh. We approached Ishmael first, but they were starting um, a scheme. Mm. So, you know, we got speedy because we just done a competition with them, and they beat us doing this song called Nelson Mandela. And it came out. He had, um, Bricks was in the same group. This guy called Pam. It was a bit of an all-star group of uh, people, you know, that ended up um, with a bit of a solo career individually, you know. Um, so how does Jasid come yeah. into the picture? So we knew Jasid. We, we, we knew of Jasid um, while, you know, we we're thinking about this concept. So Oskido literally went to Zimbabwe to look for Jasid. Wow. And wow. found him. He was a DJ in a club in Bulawayo. He was already doing what he did with um, Baseline and Shark right. Cafe. You know, so he had already had kind of a sound system kind of vibe going on. And, you know, when he came through, um, the rest is history, man. Uh, so he, we, we, he was picked to be part of the group. It wasn't, there wasn't anything chance about Bongo Muffin. You didn't stumble Muffin. into it. Yeah. No, 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 no. It was a constructed group. We already, we put the elements in there quite deliberately. So it starts as a boy band. Tandiswa joins maybe two, three years later. How does a that happen? A year later, actually. Um, we, we. She liked the vibe and she had already recorded with Lilo, uh, featured on a song called Summertime on a debut project. And so we, um, I think they were singing together. You know, there's that part on the old Summertime where there's like a voice going, take off your summer clothes, put on your summer vibe. And it was Tandy Swa and Lilo. And they were, they had uh, done Jackknife, you know, before. So we knew them from there. So they had been featuring and also DJ Fresh's uh, wife, uh, a former wife, um, Tato, uh, I mean, uh, Tabiso rather. And Tabiso, you know, uh, she was also a singer. They were on Jackknife and they did all of that together. So when we got her on to the second project as a feature, she did Hotel California and Makeba. And then we asked her to join the group because it was, and it was a mutual thing. I think mm. she also liked our vibe and she started doing a couple of shows with us. And um, the rest, off, as they say, she became, mm. yeah, a part this of is so interesting. Oh, I'm from there, so I guess what I'm talking about. Oh, for real, you want to talk about you're going to talk about when you saw Plucky. That's all my 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 aunt was the the principal for a very long time. Oh, really? Okay, let's talk about let's talk about you being a rapper, yes, it's one. Not very popular at the time when you you know you came into the scene. Would you say you broke down the door for the rest of the other rappers to actually do this you know, proudly I, I, in Setswana? I, I was an instrument, man. To you know, sometimes people will use a sushi knife to cut bread. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, with with me, Oskido kind of saw the the potential. <laughs> <laughs> you caught that late. I'm, yeah. sorry, I'm, I'm imagining. <laughs> I caught it, but I'm now imagining. Yeah, like I'm watching. Sushi <laughs> knife. It's tough. <laughs> You know, like um, mm. uh, we, we, uh, Oskido, you know, I think you need any, any potential in the world needs leadership to shape it and needs mm. an artist to shape it. 
and Oskido, you know, could see the potential. We we just wanted to come to Josie, learn Isi Zulu as fast as possible, <laughs> so we could become cool. Because we were seen yeah. as the bar, it's a good place. Yeah, it's a good place. Yeah. Yeah. And Oskido was the one who's like, yo, I love the rhythm of this language and just the texture of it. And he would always try and speak it. So of, already it wasn't like he was paying lip service to it. We could see him trying with it, you know. Um, he's the one who started calling me Motswako because I used to use the word Motswako a lot in in songs and you know as a term for the remix. Like when we do the summertime remix, I, 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 yeah, I wanted to come up with a word that I meant a remix, but the only word that I had was the word mix, mm. which is Motswako, you yeah. know. And I remember when we did summertime, there was in 1990, the remix here summertime was early 97. Mm. And you know, I want to say this is the remix. So I ended up saying, this is Mutuako. Mm. But when this is the remix. So um, the next time I heard someone use that was um, Iggy. So, you know, we, 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 we started developing it. It wasn't just one person coming up and saying, okay, I'm innovating this thing. We kind of accidentally stumbled on it. And uh, I would say Jabba was the person who H. made it a style. Yes. You know, he kind of crystallized it. Mm. And we knew now there was a style that people could follow. And all of a sudden, we heard about kids like Tony Mack and Muff mm. who were making demos and they were using this style. Like we heard about Murafi and Lebo Kuli and stuff. So before they even came to Josie, we already knew about them. Yeah. So the style took about four or so years to develop. And um, my wife was working at Universal at that time. They wanted to give Jabba a, um, a clearance. And she was like, give me that album. And mm. so she blew up his first album. Wow. So it's a family thing. Sure. It's all like full circle type thing. You know? mm. I, li I, d I didn't actually know mm -hmm. how deep the, 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 the origins of, of the whole Motswako sound was. Yeah. We'll continue the conversation in a couple of minutes time. You can hit me up on the Uconnect app. We're, we're live in studio with Stone Cold T. It's one of those songs, man. If we played it on Music Roulette, it would get 100 yeses instantly. Never burn out. It's Stone, the man himself, with the speed. Quick one on Speedy, though. A um, couple of years ago, I think it was like 2021, somewhere there. I, I saw an interview with Speedy, and, and then Speedy also came out on social media. He, he said that he was the clue that held Bo Bongo oh, Muffin really? together. <laughs> How true was that? <laughs> even, I'm, even I'm like, what? <laughs> Considering he's the one who left. And I wasn't and there. Come back. <laughs> This love hurts. That love. <laughs> oh, no. Come on. Um, okay. Like, oh, okay, on the real, um, you know, the group, we've got our issues and our dynamics, you know, uh, within. So he's the one with the least baggage from, say, the year 2000, because he was gone for like 10 years plus sure. from the group, like 14 years. Mm. Um, so, you know, so there's certain issues that developed that jobs that we gave him that, you know, if he's doing it, it's better. Uh, okay. because um so yeah he's he's the most neutral one out of all of us so now, yeah he, there's down. the there's the yeah, democratic yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> most yeah, neutral, yeah. Most <laughs> neutral. <laughs> <laughs> i know right abuti um new year's eve time you you had an almost that was hectic very difficult painful near-death experience Hane, Hane, that gas explosion happened and we almost lost the national treasure could you just take us back to that moment yeah, I, I mean, the scars are still healing um, a bit, so it's been steady but slow, you know. Um, I, You know, this thing, you know, you go in and you're trying to help. It's a New Year's Eve party at a friend's house, and there was this um, spit bry. Um, oh, one of those gas bry. Yeah, the gas <laughs> bry. So it keeps malfunctioning because every time you close it, I think it gets starved of oxygen, and then the fire goes off, the flame goes off. So a couple of times we went there, we noticed early that it had switched off and then we went to light it. So this time around, it had been a few minutes. I went there, I opened it and I didn't give enough time for the gas the to methane to like, uh, oh, no. to dissipate. Mm. And as soon, you know that thing when you light up a gas stove and then, and then you got a little like kind of explosion. So this one, it was the whole container. Yo, so about the size of a drum, you know, and it all exploded like it was oh a huge God. explosion split second but like extremely hot so it burnt my face it wow. burnt um, a bit of the knuckles on this side and you can see kind of like yeah. the trajectory here my whole forearm 
I'm it's so kind sorry, of, um, dude. But you know, uh, and it's, it's New worse. Year's Eve. Was there even a sober person to drive you to hospital at you that time? What? The lucky thing is the same bloody like <laughs> cursed <laughs> spit bride. Um, this guy, a friend of ours, had gone to fetch it. So I think I got I Jimmy this guy. So he tried to take it off the van himself, off the bike himself, and threw out his back. So literally, when this thing happened, EMS was on the scene. So that that's what was lucky for me. Oh wait, 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 hold on. So EMS are there attending to your friend. This thing broke yeah. his back. Yeah. And now it explodes <laughs> on you. It explodes on me. Ah, oh, the yeah, Lord, the yeah. Lord was with you the guys. Lord was there today. I nearly final destination wow, in wow, wow. So you know, like um so I at least got attended to like immediately. Yeah. But it was so Pool. Was and there a point where, like, after w- where you and this friend now who's recovering with a back injury, where you guys just went, yes, was that bride? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Took us like both the, out. The, the, the whole, like, the whole time. I mean, I went to the car a little bit. Like, my 48-year-old self went to have a bit of a weep. Like, I went... <laughs> <laughs> I know, I, I cried. So I went to the I screamed, you know. But I, that, I can only imagine. After the carapel, you know, mm. thank you. Actually, this song that I had, my new song, is about that. It's about that, you know, that victory over the worst moment. Like, mm. starting a year. I think I used up my bundles for bed luck this year. <laughs> like, um, hardly a month later, I got bitten by a dog in Lesotho. Hey. Wow. <laughs> I oh, hold on, hold on. I wow. Did, 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 Stone went did, did, did it happen? <laughs> Did it happen before midnight or after midnight? <laughs> because oh, then no, it was one, it, it was, was the one. last bundle from last year. <laughs> the dog one was the first one for this one. <laughs> yeah. So hey man, it was it was it was. I mean, for me, it it just got me to really focus on what's important, and um, you know, my kids are what I live for, oh, and my family. So I knew that easily. My life, seeing the burns on my hands and stuff. And the fact that the bends had gotten right up to where my glasses were, it meant that, you know, the glasses had kind of protected my eyes. Yes. And anything could have happened if the, eye, if the glasses 100%. were not on. So, so wearing glasses at night works. My Stone Cold, save your Thank life, Thank you bro. for that. <laughs> Thank you. I've been telling them. Stone, from, from my side, I'm, I'm a big fan, by the way, of, of Bongo Muffin. I mean, you guys, Little Khudi Seeds, and I, still today, I mean, this week alone, I play the album, and it, it, it's, it's, it's beautiful, man. How did the name Bongo Muffin come to be? And what does it represent? So, like I said, everything about Bongo Muffin was so deliberate. So mm. we literally sat for some time trying to come up with 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 the name. You know, mm. I remember there was a name like Tree the Hard Way. Tree the no. Hard Way, <laughs> man. <laughs> Tree the Hard Way. It wasn't going to fly. Tree the Hard Way. It wasn't going to fly. It wasn't going to work. Tree the Hard Way. That's just it. You know it's yeah, just of course. <laughs> so, um, you know, we wanted to come up with something that would easily like at, at a glance say that we are african but also speak about one thing common about us in terms of our musical influences is the dancehall influence mm-hmm. you know when back in the day i was trying to do some you know patwa raga chanting I, until i met your seat and i was like stop this yeah no yeah. <laughs> stop, it yeah. stop it now stop it now so speedy as well highly influenced by um you know born Americans. Um, Tandi Iswa, you know, she's got a lot of dancehall and uh, reggae influences in her music. And, you know, of course, Jasid. So the, 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 the bongo drum, uh, which is one of sure. the most iconic African drums. Mm. And then um, in, in, you know, international sets, even electronic music sound banks, you know, you have the bongo drums. Mm. And then, of course, um, the muffin. From Raga Muffin. Yeah, from the Raga Muffin. I was going to say Raga from Raga Muffin. Muffin. Ah. Either that or Oskido brought your food. <laughs> <laughs> After you found the bongo and then muffin. Yeah. you want That's a muffin. That's why it's muffin with an A, not with a, with a U. With a U. Okay. Yeah. Nice. You teased and, and you mentioned a few seconds ago about your, your, your new song mm-hmm. and, and what that means. But I want to now rewind just three years. 2021, mm-hmm. when you said that you were retiring from music to pursue fine art and poetry. To quote you, you yeah. said, I'm no longer interested in recording songs for the top 10. And you've, mm-hmm. co- you've you committed to other things. Are you out of retirement now, musically, because there's a new song, or, or what does it mean? I think I was misquoted, um, first of all. I, I said I would put it to the back burner. Okay. Yeah, um, so it's still there. I can't escape the music. Um, it it's found too me. soon to say back burner. Yeah, yeah. no, no, no. I, 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 so <laughs> back burner. I cut that forms. I cut that forms. <laughs> 
No, no bubble guts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, no, 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 no. Um, music has always been at the forefront of what I do, like for many, many years. And this year, it's almost, what is it? 2004. So it's almost, it's 29 years this wow. year that wow. we've, we've been in it. So um, there are other things that Yo. we do, which is like, we, I'm, I'm a social entrepreneur where we go into the, 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 the shadow of the mines in the Northwest and we're doing charity work, you know, well, charity work, but social work where we get paid for going in there and doing development programs, um, enterprise development programs, artist development programs, and so on and so forth. Bridging programs for kids who might have dropped out of uh, metric mm -hmm. and getting them into work situations and what, you know, pulling in corporates uh, to do that. I love so, that, by the way. Thank you, sir. And, you know, we... So for me, even now doing the music, um, it's no longer... I'm no longer doing it in order to make a living mm. yeah. out of it. And because it, if, it, if, if I put that kind of expectation on my music, my experience over the years has been that it, it, I end up having a really bad relationship with what's it. What's the difference? As I, I was going to ask now, like, what's the difference as a recording artist mm. to, let's say, doing an album or doing a song when it is your job, you know, you're yeah. doing it to make a living, versus now it's just purely passion driven. It is it heart. easier? It breaks your heart. First of all, you're listening on the radio or what's the coolest sound. Mm. Whereas I went to one of the guys with some of the biggest hits, Mo Keys, and asked him to do a song that is totally lateral. You know, mm. it's, it sounds like an intro because it is an intro to a series of singles that I'm going to drop. Mm. You know, so it sounds like you could put it at the beginning of a show and there'll be lights, there'll be mm. smoke, you know. Mm. We're letting some white birds fly and something, you know. <laughs> and hey, so people from the Northwest. <laughs> <laughs> people from the Northwest with all white and birds. It's we, will, we will die on that. I'm it's telling our you team, now. Papa. <laughs> you know, so yeah, um, you get to get you 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 get freedom with your music. That um, having a purely commercial approach to your music, it's a prison that you basically kind of draw an invisible prison you draw around yourself. Because then, if you fail at that imagined um, destination, then it kind of breaks your heart and it kills your creativity for mm. the next time. You get confused. You 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 try and figure out what should I do. So you, you it's a touch and go, touch and go. And I've been there. So now in recent times, I found that if I go into the studio with an open heart, mm. with no mm. expectations, then magic happens. Mm. And um, so for me, at my age, you're I having fun want, with it. I, I want to enjoy it. Mm, I want to nice. enjoy it. I I don't want to do music out of obligation anymore. All right, well, we're giving everyone in the Northwest a big sneak peek. New song that you're talking about, Maru Khasepula. Talk to yeah. us about it, where, what inspired the song. You said there was a bit of a personal journey and yeah. overcoming certain things. Talk to us about that. Yeah, so the full, say, the full saying, I think, as a lot of uh, Zonas would know, Bazona would know, it's that Maru Khasipula Musiki Molelo. You know, um, something that almost touches on where the smoke, there's fire mm. type thing, but where the clouds gathering don't mean that a storm is rolling. coming yeah. as well. Yeah. Mm. So sometimes we react to the possibility of something very remote with a, and actually manifest it instead of dealing with the things that are present and their uh, present concerns for us. So for me, the Musi is the living for my kids, living mm. for my family, and Maru are the perceived uh, troubles that might come down the road. Because mm. with this, there was something that was right in front of my face, but at that moment, I saw a moment to reflect and a moment to kind of re-focus um, on the... Um, the coming victory and that victory is a manufactured victory because I go into situations not with the fear of failure but with the anticipation of a victory. I love that you use the word lateral because it is one of the most lateral mm. sounding songs I've heard in a long mm. time. I think in the oh. beginning we're like, okay, well, you know, where's he going? Yeah. This, is okay. he putting under 3,000 yeah. on us? Yeah, there's <laughs> so much. But the thing is, I mean, even if you wanted to do remixes in the future, there's yeah. so much you can do. With that, I'm just gonna call it a certified hit. Man. Yep. That's, yep. A, that's yep. a banger. That's right a there. banger. Hallelujah. Yo, I know this goes out to to Stone. They do not. Call.
call me die hard for nothing. <laughs> for nothing, <laughs> man. You know when I roll people up one, one nice one, you know, like yeah. a, a good uh, yeah. headbanger, I roll them up. And then they're like, yo, man, this is so good. I'm like, they don't call me stone for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> they don't call me stone cold for nothing. <laughs> uh, you said that it's uh, um, an intro to a series of things that you're going to be yeah, putting yeah. out. Talk to us quickly before we close about that. What's to come? Yeah, I mean, we have um, songs that are very quieto influenced, Motswako, mm -hmm. you know, off ramps that we're taking. So I've got a song that I recorded many, many years ago called... Uh, produced by the man Toddy Mac. It's too soon. Um, <laughs> in the current climate, I don't know about putting out any song about Mutakas, but... Yeah. So, you know, my boy Toddy Mac did that one. It's got Momuli Me on it. Mm. It's got Noti mm. and Toddy himself rapping on it um, and myself, of course. And we are about to put Dukes on it as well. So, yeah. Oh. Nice. yeah so so we, 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 we're going to be following up with quite a lot of uh, tracks. Toddy has done other tracks for me as well. Um, there's Pex Africa also. I He's love Pex Africa. Yeah, yeah. So we, I'm just trying to get a lot of people that I've worked with to come through and contribute to the album. But the core of my market is like a 35-year-old female professional driving a hatchback oh, with the boys? one or two kids. Uh, the boys I don't have kids. Yeah. I have a hatchback. I don't have a hatchback. <laughs> what about yeah. the boys? I'm not 35 yeah. yet. But what about the 35 <laughs> drop top? That primarily, that's who I'm talking to. Sure, sure, music. sure. Um, these are people about Groove Akap when men, you know, they plan four to eight weeks before they do an event. Mm -hmm. They want their events well curated and the value proposition mm. quite high in mm. terms of what mm. you're offering them. So that's where we're going. You know, Kwaito is the new jazz, man. So mm. I love know, that. Kwaito so yeah, mm. right is the new jazz. So that's where we're going with it. Um, I'm not going to lose my history through it or try and run in the lanes about DJ Mapori and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think the fact that we've got this uh, equity in our names, we can exploit that part mm. of the industry. We don't need the big crowds. We just need a high ticket price. That's mm. it. Spoken like high OG. LSM. Uh, uh, that's where we're targeting. Stone, uh, that, that's where we got to end it. Unfortunately, I wish we could go for another hour or so. But uh, thank you so much. Anko, and, thank you and so much, brother. Finally, I get to have you on my show. I've tried for over a decade, but we made it happen. Are you finally. kidding me? It just never worked out. There was always, I think, once or twice you you were either in here, yeah, you in Cape Town, or you were there. We were speaking uh, to your the first time I heard you, I get an ignana untona le bujo. Antoine Bouagar le ko. Ati bela ke le ko. No, no, no. And uh, I'm glad, you know, we came through because people have been saying, Kere kia ko, Uncle Tep. But no, I say Uncle Tep. Kere kia ra, eh, baba. Uncle Tep. I'm not. I DJ Uncle Tep. Kere kia ra, guys. Guys, my name ne, has been butchered more than anyone in the industry. The whole Malome <laughs> thing <laughs> came from, they thought I was saying Uncle uh, yeah. Tep, not Uncle Tep. Yeah. Ne? Then somebody once called me up on the show and they, and, and they called me Tivoli. So Uncle I'm like, Tivoli. you need Tivoli. It's and they're like, tap. oh, Tivoli sells taps. It's the type of taps. The Pompo. Then Pompo <laughs> came out. Malume Pompo because Pompo ki? Tap. The latest one, uh, here at UFM, our very own uh, engineer, uh, Tebsa, he calls me Tap and Time. <laughs> <laughs> tap and Time. So there's many variations. But uh, again, thanks for coming Love, through. Brother. Thank you so much. Uh,